Hello everybody, my name is Alash Heiser and welcome to the Canadian Money Talk, the channel about Canadian investing and personal finance. Please like and subscribe. I record two videos per week, so make sure you ring the notification bell to get notified each time one comes out. Now there's going to be some accounting involved in this video and the next video as well. I would like to tell everybody that I am not an accountant, so please talk to your own paid accountant. Also, in this video, there is so much information that I ended up splitting it into two parts. Most of the theory is in the first part, and then the sexier stuff about corporations is in the second part, so please bear with me. We're going to be talking about private corporations in this and the next video. So let's talk about what a corporation is and why you would want to incorporate. So there's two criteria for you to become incorporated. Number one, you have to make at least $100,000 in income. And number two is you cannot spend every dollar of that. So it really only becomes worth it after you make hundred k of income because of additional expenses related to the corporation, such as the accounting fees. The tax benefits of a corporation occur only if you leave some money in the corporation and you spend only some of it personally. If you personally spend all of the money that you make, the math on purpose by the government works out uh, about even so a corporation doesn't really help you from a tax perspective uh, compared to getting paid directly uh, yourself personally. They work about the same. So why would you want to incorporate? Well, there is the limited liability, meaning uh, people can only go after what is in your corporation. They cannot go after your own personal assets. And then secondly, there is the taxes, where a private corporation has a small business tax rate of 9% on actively generated taxable income, up to a half a million dollars per year. So that is significantly lower than you would pay personally if you made a half a million dollars. So the other benefits of a corporation are uh, taxes, as I mentioned. Uh, also, you have to be contracting or be self-employed since you cannot be an employee of your own corporation and also work for another employer. An employer employs you, not the corporation. Also note that the government goes after people who stay in the same place for 20 years as contractors and they end up uh, disallowing the deductions of that contractor because they deem them to be an employee. So you can run a uh, small business like a store through the corporation. You can also own an investment property through a corporation to limit the liability for lawsuits. So if you have uh, an apartment building, for example, you can have that in a corporation. And then if somebody sues you, the only things that they can go after is what's in that corporation, which would be the apartment building. But this doesn't help you quite as much if you're keeping uh, money in a corporation as well, which we'll talk about later. And you still have to insure the building for fire. So instead, you would want to insure the property heavily and I got this from two separate accountants. The last benefit of the corporation is it allows income smoothing over multiple years. So as an example if you work one year for a hundred thousand dollars and then you want to take the other year off you can using the corporation pay yourself fifty thousand the first year uh, staying uh, in a reasonably low personal tax bracket. And then when you're not working the second year, you can pull the other 50000 from the corporation and you will have paid a much smaller tax personally than if you had earned $100,000 personally in one year and paid the taxes on it all in one year. You'll note that you can run uh, your own business, be self-employed or a contractor without being incorporated and you still get the tax deductions for expenses spent making uh, the income, but you do not get the low tax rate or the limited liability nor the income smoothing. Let's talk about some of the costs uh, that are in place for you to incorporate. So you can do it online if it's simple and then it might cost you as low as three or four hundred dollars. 
you could uh, get a lawyer to do it for you if it's complicated, if you have multiple uh, shareholders and so on. But then it will cost you uh, over a thousand dollars, which it cost me about 11 years ago. So it might be higher by now. Mine is a BC corporation, and you also want to make sure that it has a unique name, uh, since there's a name search uh, that happens. And once the uh, corporation is created, you get articles of incorporation, you get uh, PDFs or about an inch worth of paper, and it uh, shows how the usually 100 shares are assigned to the different shareholders. Creating a corporation creates a separate entity that never dies. It's like another human that will be with us forever. And as long as you don't go public, uh, you can have a small private corporation tax rate that is 9% on actively generated taxable income up to the half million that I mentioned before. The general federal corporate tax rate is 28%, so that is definitely the government helping small business. There's a recent catch about passive income, meaning investment income, in a private corporation, which is where self-employed people are saving for their retirement and where I am moving towards financial independence. In its uh, 2018 budget, the federal liberal government made changes to the tax advantages of holding passive investments within a private corporation, which is ultimately what everybody does. Uh, meaning holding passive investments in a corporation. Passive income investment is income from fixed income investments, dividend paying stocks, interest, capital gain, rent, royalties, and other earnings that are not directly related to the corporation's active main business income. This passive income can be significant for large corporations. Now for small businesses, there is a special provision where up to a half a million of active business income can be taxed at a lower rate than the general corporate tax, as I mentioned. What the new tax rules do, however, is reduce the amount of active business income that's eligible for the lower tax rate if your passive investment income is higher than $50,000 a year. Let's do an example. Let's say your consulting firm has a million dollars in passive investments that had a 6% return last year. That's 60000 in taxable income, or 10000 more than the allowed threshold. The new tax rules say that your small business deduction will be reduced by $5 for every dollar over the threshold. So in this case, by $50,000. In other words, instead of having a half a million of your active business income tax at the lower rate, only 450000 is eligible. In summary, all passive income counts in the $50,000, even capital gains. If you go over the $50,000 in passive income, it reduces the half a million that you have a small business active income at a 5 to 1 rate. That is, I can have up to $150,000 of passive income. If I have no active income, to be taxed at the low preferential rate, which seems reasonable. And so these new tax rules were going to affect only about 3% uh, of the private corporations, I remember back in 2018. We'll cover the remaining corporation-related information in part two of this video, including investing in a corporation, so look for that soon. If you have any requests on what you would like me to cover in future videos, please put that into the comment section. Please like, subscribe, ring the notification bell, and may you have a profitable day.